How's it going, guys? Good. Good. Uh, good. Adam and Jesse are with me this morning. They have uh, put together a film. And, and you know what? I want to let you guys explain to people what it is that you've done. So, Jesse, you're the, you, the director of the film. Yeah. So give people an idea of what the film name is and what you guys are doing. All right. The film is called She Sees Beyond. It's actually an eight-part series. Uh, right now, we've directed a short film, which is kind of a proof of concept of the bigger thing. And we have a campaign right now to raise funds to make the entire thing. It's a 80s horror X-Files type thing. It's a mystery and a horror film. Kind of in the same vein of okay. uh, Stranger Things. Stranger kind of Things deal. and Twin Peaks, that kind of thing. Okay, yeah. okay. So what brought you guys into this project? What, what made you think about it? Uh, either Adam or Jesse can go on this one. Well, um, me and Jesse have been friends since high school. So it's been yeah. almost 10 years now. Over 10 years, and, probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. And... Um, how long have you been writing this for? It's yeah, been I've been writing this one. I've been writing this one for three years, based on a script I actually wrote seven years ago. I started writing it when I went to film school uh, in two thousand and eight, and this is kind of a reworking of it, turning it into a series. Okay, so Jesse, uh, Adam, uh, you guys, uh, Jesse, uh, Jesse Oliver, and, and Adam Slamanger, my guests, we're talking about she sees beyond. So proof of concept film. So you put this film together, you put it out to various distributors, various uh, uh, financial guys to see if you can't get this film funded, correct? Yeah, we're, we're, the main uh, funding thing we're doing right now is a crowdfunding on Indiegogo, which okay. is uh, which is kind of a democratic way that anyone who is interested can contribute. They can either give a flat amount or uh, buy a perk. Like they can buy a signed copy of the script, buy a download of it when it's done, that sort of thing. Okay, yeah. okay, Adam. Uh, from that standpoint, I mean, it's 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 always interesting to try and and convince people mm -hmm. to invest. Uh, in a in a program a program like this, so what w besides it being a local angle, besides that being your 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 fixation on how you can get funding, what is it that you're trying to promote to these people to to get them to to, to invest in your product? Oh man, uh, I think it's just a really strong product. It's going to be a entertaining final final series. We're using local actors, local everything. We're trying to really come from that angle, but. Um, I think it's mainly just going to be a really good, good show. Okay, so from a quality yeah, point of view, that's quality. what you're selling as far yeah. as that's concerned. Uh, Jesse, I mean, when when I look at proof of concept, when I look at different things of that m nature, you've talked to me about it being an X Files, '80s kind yeah. of horror thing. So, so how do you tap down into that? How do you get? How do, I mean, I know you've worked on the story for a number of years. Yeah. So, what was the thought process on it to get to that point of where you're going to focus on this story in particular? Yeah, uh, well, the story the story has always kind of been the same over the years, but the kind of angle of making it 80s horror came about three or four years ago. There's kind of been a resurgence of that kind of nostalgia factor. Uh, I first noticed it a couple of years ago with the music I started listening to. It had a lot more of a synth influence and stuff, and, you know, X-Files came back, Twin Peaks is coming back, and I think that kind of just had been permeating the air, and I kind of picked it up, and then, of course, Stranger Things just kind of made it explode. And so that's how I got to that. Yeah, Stranger Things, uh, you know, uh, there's all kinds of different things that come out on a regular basis that, yeah. that, that kind of change the markers, guys. I mean, it, it's, it's, and it's tough to stay on top of that, especially when you're trying to crowdfund something, yeah. because you, you might have, here's the thing, you guys might get funding on this in the next three months. That's right. Will it still be relevant in three months, or will someone else grab it? I mean, that's, that's the big, that's the big uh, harbinger at this point, well, isn't it? I, I think... Um, the, the one thing that people can always come back to is a good, entertaining story, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's 80s horror or, you know, 90s rom-coms, whatever it is, you can always come back to being able to sit down with your family, watch a good, entertaining, slightly scary, this is going to yeah. be a horror project story. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's why besides just making it kind of a, an homage to these past uh, films and stuff like that, we spend a lot of time really making the story work right yeah so are you guys and again i don't want to give anything away here on this uh, are you are you more camp are you more serious on this i mean because when you think yeah. 80s for uh, 80s yeah. horror, you're thinking you know you're thinking freddie yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know yeah. you're thinking jason you're thinking all this kind yeah. of stuff and you're yeah. you, you it's know. easy to think of the couple piano keys and the and exactly. all that kind of stuff. yeah but no exactly uh, uh, we, we wouldn't say we're dead serious there is that fun camp angle to kind of that people will enjoy but essentially the story is serious and the story is a real story it's not just a kind of surface level throwback kind of thing well yeah i mean there's two schools of thought on that yeah. right if you if you play at camp you play at camp all the way yeah but mm -hmm. if you don't play at camp you pick your spots and that's right you exactly. know and, and and it still gives you that levity because you need the levity because yeah. you're gonna if you're gonna have horror 
Yeah. Which, which means for a good chance there's going to be death involved. Yeah. Or 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 dismemberment or whatever, yeah. right? And, and and you know, I mean, as much as you can't bring a lot of levity to that, but you can bring levity to the situation. I think that's imperative. Yeah, that's right. I like to think of it as horror's gone through a couple iterations since the '80s. The '90s horror saw the kind of the teenage, uh, the teenage like I know what you did last summer mm -hmm. kind of thing. The 2000s see a lot of kind of a resurgence of vampires and kind of mythology. Mm -hmm. I like to think of this as if 80s horror had never gone away, but it had naturally evolved. Oh, so you're, yeah, you're, kind of you're like taking a, a you're, yeah. you're going homage to 80s horror, but you're saying yeah. to yourself, okay, if we let it, if we had actually let it breathe a little bit, yeah. this is what it would have been. Yeah. Where a stranger things is set in the eighties is completely an eighties thing. Ours mm -hmm. is set in present day and it's kind of, it has that kind of eighties feel, but it's more, it, ha it also has a modern kind of feel to it. Could something like this, I know from a crowdfunding point of view, and Adam and, and Jess here are my guests, I mean, obviously crowdfunding didn't exist back in the 80s. Right. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you, you, you basically had, you know, you asked your mom or your dad or you asked yeah. somebody to, or a bank to help yeah. you out. I mean, from that standpoint, it, it, how would you have, I, I'm going to put, put your 80s hat on, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, from an 80s point of view, how do you go get this funded? I mean, how would you have made this happen besides doing what I asked? I mean, right. there's a lot of ways you'd have to go and tap on, on people, wouldn't yeah. you? Bottle well, drives. Think, <laughs> yeah, bottle drives. And I think <laughs> yeah, the, car the, washes. Yeah, yeah, the 80s was kind of cool because there were a lot of independent horror films being made in the 80s, and that's kind of where we get that. The big fans of 80s horror movies kind of like that schlocky, low-budget feel. Mm -hmm. right? It was kind of that sense that anything was possible with an 80s horror film, and people could just get a couple thousand dollars together as long as they had a camera and there's a bucket of blood and make whatever they wanted. The and, thing now, and, though, is that modern audiences are expecting, you know, big budget, good yeah. camera, yeah. good resolution. Everything has to look yeah. crystal clear. Well, and they want smart, too. Yeah, you know smart, what I mean? Like, I mean, they, they, there's, there's a real lack of tolerance now for believing that you're audience is not smart mm -hmm. right. you know what i mean like everyone there's no problem having escapist entertainment yeah. okay yeah. so if you want to go for two hours and watch freddie cut up people that's fine yeah. but there was a little bit of a story to that even yeah. yeah but now there's a premium on intelligence in the writing mm -hmm. there's a premium on intelligence more importantly in the storytelling and how it's laid out there and i think that you can't get away with that the way that you might be able to get away with that in the 80s when you're trying to do this yeah right? abso absolutely in the 80s it was kind of just what's fun what's kind of new and sensational that you get to see yeah and w i definitely uh, tried to incorporate that intelligence factor into the script uh by making it about the 80s my my screenplay is an, a throwback to the 80s in the sense that one of the main storylines is that in the 80s there was a string of uh murders right and today, the detectives that are investigating the present-day murders are looking back at those 80s murders, and they get sidetracked to the, to the point where they can't even see what's happening nowadays because they're so obsessed with what happened in the 80s. And sure. So I'm kind of playing on that nostalgia factor and the sense that people are always looking to the past but not really... Uh, well, and it's, you know, that, that kind of cold case stuff gives you all kinds of different angles to play mm -hmm, with, too, sure. right? I mean, that's that's the that's the key to this, is that there's, like you said, the method. All, we talked about Salvador Dali, for God's sakes, this morning, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and about the fact that they're pulling his body out decades after he's been dead right. to, to establish paternity. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, uh, so from that standpoint, I mean, that's not a murder, because, I mean, Salvador Dali just, I mean, mm -hmm. he died. But, yeah. but from a standpoint of an interesting story, you're like, man, like... Yeah. People yeah. always have to look into the past to see where they're going. Yeah. Right? Look look back to look forward. Yeah. Kind of deal. And we're so saturated with like eighties, um eighties media right now, nineties media and stuff like that. It's kinda every a lot of present day stuff, even in music and stuff, you know, has that eighties beat yeah. influence. It was a simpler time when <laughs> the world wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Jesse Oliver, Adam Slamanger, my guest. We're talking about She Sees Beyond. It's their, uh, it's, it's their concept video, but also they want to get into a series on this. We'll talk more about that uh, momentarily. I want to talk about uh, local angles on this. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about local actors. You talked about uh, local shoots. I want to talk more about that. More with Adam and Jesse and She Sees Beyond after this on Pulse FM Standby. Adam Slamang, Jesse Oliver, my guest. She Hello, Sees Siri. Beyond is their project uh, that we're working on right now as we get to, towards things. Okay, so uh, this is complete now? This this first part's complete? That's right. Yes. We, we've made a promo video, which is a proof of concept for the entire series. Okay, how long is it? It's 10 minutes. 10 minutes long. So it's, it's, like, a, it's like a short. It's kind of a short and film. And yeah. so you now... What do you guys do? Walk me through the process. Do you put this out to people? Have you have you done that? Have you tried to look for 
distribution that way or anything that way? Or what What have you had? I mean, everyone has good news and bad news. So let's yeah. go bad news as well, okay? Um, sure. Have you been rejected on this stuff? And, and, and did they give you reason as to why you were rejected? Yeah, well, the main way besides this uh, crowdfunding thing that we've done is grants and yeah, we have been rejected on grants. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Very well, that happens. It does, yeah. Right? So it's very competitive. Yeah. Oh, it's a very competitive yeah. market. Yeah. And that's the thing people forget here is that, you know, as uh, for every Adam and Jesse I've got, I've got 10, 15 guys that are doing the same that's damn right. thing that you are, or yeah, ladies exactly. that are doing that. And well, this is, stuff, this is right? Hollywood North, right? Right. Vancouver's yeah. just down the road, and we have, you know, 10,000 other filmmakers, and we're all vying for that top spot. Okay, so you guys sent us a note a couple weeks ago saying that you got this whole thing going on, and I, I appreciate that. Now, from a local standpoint, you talked about local actors, you talked about local locations. Give us an idea of what you guys did as far as, um, you know, I don't need to know names of local actors specifically, but you, yeah. you guys hired local guys? Yeah, every, everyone is uh, Vancouver or surrounding area based. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the entire uh, crew that we have on board so far, we're still we're still building that crew, but they're typically grads from either Capilano University or SFU's film program. Okay, and where'd you guys shoot this? We we shot it in Surrey and North Vancouver. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Our our lead actress is actually a she's just graduating out of high school. Yeah. She's a fantastic Lord actress, yeah. Lord Bing. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Wonderful. Nice. Actress. Excellent. Love that kind of thing. So so if I'm watching this 10-minute film and I'm in Surrey, where am I going to, what, what, where'd you guys shoot? I mean, you know, give some people some love here. Yeah. Let us know. The, both both locations are filmed in uh, within apartments and houses. Okay. One of the houses is in North Van, one of the houses is in Surrey. But there's some street footage around the Fleetwood area. Okay. Yeah, so. Not yeah. yesterday, right? You guys weren't there yesterday with the police <laughs> tape up and all that kind of no, stuff? No, it didn't work yeah. out. I, no. I, I, I got to keep our raving fans away from us. Yeah. You know what? The RCMP, listen, I could have them here in 10 minutes to talk to you guys about anything <laughs> if we were down there in Surrey yesterday. So. Looking over the tapes, yeah. Yeah, no, you know what? I mean, I think that the important thing about what we try to do on this program is make sure that we talk local mm -hmm. and we talk what's important to people in Surrey. So when we hear uh, that you guys are, are trying to bring this into Surrey, trying to bring it to North yeah. Vancouver, but. Yeah. but but trying to bring it south of Fraser, it also means Syria. opportunity that's right. for mm -hmm. other people as well to understand that that's, you know, I had a, I had a student uh, um, a filmmaker from Surrey here, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Peverly. I had him in a couple uh, months ago, and, 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 you know, he's 17, 18 years old, and it mm -hmm. took him about 19 months to shoot it. Right. And like they would get kicked out of places, and they'd, yeah. they'd circle back and come back three months later exactly. and try and get some more, and, it, you know, it's it's... It's difficult to do, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of pitfalls, yeah. isn't there? That style of guerrilla filmmaking where you just kind of run in with a camera, shoot it, it's... We've done that a We've lot of times. That. That, like, before this, that's essentially our main yeah. <laughs> mode of filming. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's not sustainable. So what we're trying to do is do yeah. it in a little more professional light. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a longer project. There's more money involved, more people involved, and we want to do it yeah. well. So how have you funded this to this point? I mean, you know, it's not... Uh, we've, we've talked about this with yeah. different cameras. How is it that you can get... Yeah. I mean, this this is an investment. I mean, it is. So well, it's... It's almost a labor of love for you guys, but you have to yeah. pay for it there's, somehow. Yeah, there's well, a lot of beg, borrow, yeah. uh, not stealing, but, um, yeah, but beg, over, borrow, and uh, putting in a lot of our own money. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, over the years, we've uh, we've amassed our equipment. Uh, so we have we have good quality cameras. Uh, we have good quality sound equipment, and yeah, everything that was production related came out of pocket for us for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. short film. We've been doing this since high school. Yeah. At grade eight, I think it was, yeah. and. Over those 10, 11, 12 years, we've made friends who have stuff. We've yeah. bought our own things, and it's just kind of slowly amassed. And So we're lucky that, while I tend to focus on the story, uh, the storytelling side, we also have members of our team and our friend group who focus on the tech side. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of that good tech too already in place. Well, and you have to. Yeah, you know you what? I, to, I mean, yeah, it, as, as much as it's great to try and tell a story, yeah. if you don't have people that can help make it happen for yeah. you, I mean, it's it's got to be a collaboration, and that's that's the yeah. key here. I mean, there is there is only one director. You're right, but at the yeah. same time, you have to have the ability oh, to, to tap on people to make that happen. No, right? no filmmaker is an island. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't I don't see the hierarchy of filmmaking as really a hierarchy. I see it as a productive way to get the set running, but mm -hmm. everyone is equally important. And there's dozens of people, not just from Vancouver but from Surrey, that are making this project happen. And, Definitely. Yeah. 
And that's one of the one of the things we're trying to do with this is just to be able to compensate everyone a little bit for their time because we're all adults. We're we're running. We have yeah, jobs, we have jobs and, and bills to pay. Oh yeah. 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 So, so well, I mean, anyone yeah. who's uh, looked at our email string, yep. you know, understands that it took us about ten emails to put oh, yeah. this together. It's yep. not like you, 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 it's not like oh yeah, I just show up tomorrow at yeah, quarter to seven absolutely. to make it happen. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Uh, Adam Slamang, Jesse Oliver, my guest, she sees beyond is the project they're working on right now. So it leads me to. Uh, what's important next? Okay, so we've talked about the the eight episodes you guys are working on, but let's get beyond that for a moment. Adam, Jesse, three years from now, what do you want to be doing in the business? I mean, I, I, I mean, that's this is this is a step to another step to yeah, our steps. So, definitely. from a progression point of view, I'll start with Adam first. We we'll get to Jesse second. Adam, from your point of view, what do you want to be doing in three years with this in this business? In this business, uh, I have just off the top of my head, I have two other television series ideas I would like to make. Mm-hmm. I think if we can get this done, that would lead to those becoming done. I would ideally love to have a production company with Jesse mm-hmm. and be able to take in people's films. Uh, hopefully from Surrey we can give an a- access point for local people to come and bring us films, bring us projects, and then we can make them. Um, yeah, well, Je- Jesse? Yeah, well, I think Adam covered all the creative stuff that I want to do. I'm, I'm largely on the same page as him, so I would just also want to be able to uh, continue making creative projects and continue and help people out mm-hmm. who may not have the opportunities and just really create a good network and maybe get filmmaking into the hands of people who might not have access to filmmaking because even in, though we haven't done it on a huge professional level, it's been very fulfilling for us. And yeah. I think it's, it's very fulfilling for anyone who gets involved, and I'd love to be able to go help like that. And I mean, of course, there's YouTube that, yeah. you know, you can film something on your camera and throw it up there. But I, I think there could be an easier yeah. way to expedite people yeah. into a professional realm cool. where they're... Well, the, the biggest problem we have is that there are so many good creative people out there that simply do not have access. That's mm-hmm. right. And, yeah. and uh, some of the most brilliant people are the poorest ones, you know what I mean? Like, and, and Usually. Because, <laughs> well, from a standpoint of, of life experience is that yeah. you... you you have to be creative. You have to kind of uh, improvise on the fly in your life. And I don't think that you get that all the time necessarily. And this is just a broad uh, statement more than anything else is that, is that sometimes adversity breeds the most creative people that are out there. And I think that there are people that are out there that, can, that are dying for a hand. They're dying for a vine just to do mm-hmm. whatever it is they want to do, whether it be film work or art or radio yeah. or whatever the case might be. And you make the point of trying to make that happen. So before I let you go, I, I want you guys to give us a plug. Where can I be a part of this crowdfunder? What can I do on Facebook? Where where can I go? Sure. I think the easiest way is to go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash SSB film. SSB as in She Sees Beyond. And, uh, yeah, from there you can find out everything you need to know. And at the top of that page is a link to our Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. And if you click on that, you'll get paragraphs and paragraphs about what we're doing. And, and our 10-minute video and as well. And you'll see the 10-minute video, yeah. So you can see the concept video there the video and you get there. an idea and, and, yeah. and decide whether or not you want to invest at that point. Yeah, that's right. So or you're putting even, money where your mouth is. Even, sh- even yeah, share right. it. Exactly. Even sharing it's great. Sharing right. would be lovely. Okay. Well, we'll put it on our Facebook site later on today. How's that work for you guys? That sounds fantastic. All right. Adam, Jesse, great to be a part of the program today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having we'll, us. we'll chat you again. Again, keep sending me updates. You now have my email, Adam. I so I'll keep uh, in the Don't loop. be a creeper, but again, at the same time, <laughs> keep us up to date with what's going on. For so, sure. And Jesse, thanks for that. Wonderful. All right. Adam and Jesse, uh, again, for She Sees Beyond, you can go to Facebook. Again, go to facebook.com and then forward slash SSB film, and you'll find all of the information there uh, that you can find about She Sees Beyond. Adam Slavang and Jesse Oliver.